Hello again and welcome to another 5-minute Fly the Wing in-flight maneuver video. Today it's about getting the airplane on the ground when there's wind and it's not coming directly down the runway. Crosswind landings confound and perplex some pilots and most of us don't practice them as much as we probably should. Now you may have heard of two methods of crosswind landings, the crab and the side slip. As you're always going to end up doing a side slip when you're right over the runway, I teach only that method. In the real world, I don't want to wait until I'm over the runway to find out I don't have enough rudder authority to land the airplane in a crosswind, which is what might happen if you're still crabbing on final. The side slip gives me better information about how strong the wind is and whether it's gusting or shearing as I come down on final. Rule number one in a crosswind landing is you don't let the wheels touch the runway unless the longitudinal axis of the airplane is aligned with runway centerline. Well, that means the nose is pointed at the far end of the runway during roundout, flare, and touchdown. If not, then that means the wheels are not going straight either and that is going to impose tremendous side loads on the landing gear, possibly resulting in the airplane shooting off the side of the runway as you attempt to decelerate with that yawing moment. An awareness of wind should begin as you enter the traffic pattern. Where is it coming from and how strong? Next, visualize what that wind is going to do to you on downwind, base, final touchdown and rollout. Correct for the wind by crabbing on downwind and base, but on final, switch to a side slip so you can maintain center line all the way to the runway. If you can't keep the nose of the airplane pointed at the far end of the runway, even with a rudder pedal pushed to the floor, well, that's your indication that the crosswind component on that runway exceeds the limitations of your airplane. Switch to another runway because you don't want to put the airplane on a runway if you can't keep it going straight. Now, due to friction near the surface, wind tends to be a little different on the ground than it is at 200 or even 100 feet over the airport. But prepare for this and correct for whatever wind you encounter at any point in the landing. If it doesn't look right at any point, don't hesitate to go around. You really do have to live in the moment when you're landing in a crosswind. It's all visual outside the airplane. Use aileron to stay over the center line and opposite rudder to keep the nose pointed at the far end of the runway. In any significant crosswind, you should land on the upwind wheel first. As the wing loses lift, the downwind wheel will naturally come down to the runway on its own. As the airplane decelerates, control effectiveness fades and relative to your ground speed, the crosswind component increases. These two things together require increased control inputs. You'll always need more and more aileron as you roll out in a crosswind landing to keep that upwind wing down. Don't make a decent crosswind landing but then lose control of the airplane as you're rolling out or taxiing off the runway. Remain vigilant about where the wind is and continue to correct for it until the airplane is tied down. Well, here's some video I shot landing in Henderson, Nevada with a 26 knot right crosswind. It was gusting to 31 knots. You'll notice I make lots and lots of constant and small corrections with the aileron to keep the plane from drifting from center line. You can't see my feet, but they're busy too on the rudder pedals trying to keep the nose straight. Watch closely and you'll see that the right wheel does indeed touch down first. And right after I plant it on the runway, I immediately go full right aileron to keep that upwind wing down. Because of the strong headwind component, this was a wind about 40 degrees right of the runway, I was able to quickly slow the plane and make the first taxiway turnoff after landing, less than 1,200 feet from the threshold. Now, that's probably something you couldn't do in a no-wind situation in a sky lane. Here's another short video landing a Cub in the right crosswind of about 8 knots. As I turn to final, I use aileron into the wind to keep the airplane over the runway center line and opposite rudder to yaw the nose back to the left so it stays pointed down the runway. If you were to look at an inclinometer, you'd see that the ball is way outside the cage. I'm slipping the airplane and I'm totally uncoordinated, but that's the objective. Trying to keep the airplane going straight in a wind that's counterproductive to that effort. Again, the upwind or right wheel touches first, followed by the downwind wheel, and the stick immediately goes to the far right into the wind after the wheels are on the ground. If you need to polish up your crosswind landing procedures, grab an instructor that has some tailwheel or glider experience and get it figured out. Once you get the hang of it, you'll really enjoy landing in crosswinds, and as an added bonus, you'll generally have the airport to yourself, as any kind of crosswind tends to chase away the fair weather weekend warriors at most airports. Have fun, fly safely, and I'll see you again next time for another 5-minute Fly the Wing in-flight maneuver video.